Hi, today we're going to draw this rocker arm drawing found in your book and we're going to start on the right side and do this area and work our way over and get the spherical radius at the end and this other radius using geometric construction. So what we want to do first is use our ANSIB template. This whole object, we can see the distances here are 6 and 6, so it, it's going to be pretty lengthy and we're going to use the AS, ANSIB template. It's a uh, 11 by 17 template so it should fit the drawing. Okay, the way that we're going to do that, you should have already downloaded your templates from Moodle. So if you haven't done that, you need to go into Moodle and download the A, B, and C template because you will need those this semester. So I'm going to say File, New, and instead of, if, if yours does not say DWT, it, it may start out with Drawing, but you need to go up to DWT because that's what those templates are in Moodle. Once you download those, those are a DWT file. And then you'll just scroll to where you have downloaded. And um, then I had put mine in here, so I'm going to choose ANSIB. And that brings in all of your line types, your dimension styles, and, and your border, and that kind of thing. So it brought us into layout. So I'm going to toggle over to model. And I'm going to start by drawing this circle. So this circle is a diameter of 1.38 and then we've got lines from the quadrant going to the left at 1.25. So that's what we're going to draw first. Circle and D, enter, 1.38, enter. Okay, and I need to zoom out just a little. Right, then I'm going to do line from quadrant and that's 1.25 and do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, and I'll connect those two. That's going to become a hidden line. So we could go ahead and do that, but we know that we're going to offset from that, so we'll leave it as it is right now. So that's our next thing we're going to offset. If we come over here, we can see that wall thickness is 0.25. Okay, we're going to offset. 0.25 okay and we can extend those other lines out and now it's safe to put this as a hidden line notice when you use the template all of those are loaded for you and now we can toggle back over we see the small circle on the inside is 0.5 and it's in line with the other so we'll create that Alright, now we can start creating this other geometry. We know that this is 6 straight across and all of these are in line and this rib here is in line with it as well. So we're going to do a line from that center all the way over 6. Okay, and then we will create this circle which is 0.75 diameter and then the smaller one is uh, that's a 1.75 I'm sorry 1.75 diameter for the outer circle and diameter 1 for the inner circle and D enter 1.75 and D enter we're just going to do one we're not going to worry about the tolerance right now we will get to that later in the semester so now we have those two circles. We know by looking at the picture that this comes into the quadrant here and attaches itself here. So we're going to do that. And we see that that works out nicely. Now on this other side, it's going to attach itself, but it won't be to the quadrant. And we can do that on the bottom as well. Now our center line, we need to offset for that wall thickness for our rib, and that wall thickness is 0.25, we see that here. So we're going to offset, and we're going to have to offset half of that, which is 0.125. And we'll offset to the top and bottom, and then we can trim that. And 
and this is trimmed up. We should have used our select boundaries trim, but that's okay. And we can actually, I actually just extend that. Well, that's okay. We don't have to extend it on out. What happens is we're going to turn that into a center line later. Okay, so now we can start on this other side. We're going to do another line from the center out six because that was the distance on that side as well. And that's going to give us to the center of this circle here. And when we come across, you can see that this diameter, this is a cylindrical object from the top view, you'll be able to see that as a circle. Well, in the front view, the one that we're doing right now, it's going to appear as a rectangle. So we need to get the boundaries for that rectangle. And the way we're going to do that, we can see that this circle diameter is 2. And we get that from here, and that goes into the side. We see the little construction lines here to show us that it's the same. So that diameter is 2. So what we have right now is the center of that. We're going to just create a line from here and we're going to offset one on either side of that line. So offset one to the right and to the left. Okay, and this boundary was 0 0.38. It was a little bit thicker on this side than back here. So 0 0.38, which is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. 0 0.375 is 3 eighths. So we're going to do 3 sixteenths. So offset, and you can do fractions in AutoCAD too. If you just do 3 slash 16, it will take it and it will do the math for you. And then we can just kind of stretch these out. We could use the fillet command to, to make that a corner if we keep our radius at zero. And sometimes it's quick to do that. Sometimes it's just quick to do what we did. Either way, there's no wrong way to do that. Okay, and then we can trim out what we don't need. Whoops, not that much. Let's try that again. Alright, and I just kept my center line there. And now we're going to do that spherical radius. Well, that spherical radius is 1.5, and that goes over the top. So we're going to do draw, arc, and we're going to do start in radius. And that will allow us to pick the start point, the end point, and then type in the radius. So we're going to choose this as our start point, this is our end point, and then our radius is 1.5, and boom, we got that. Okay, now we can look at the diameter, this diameter of the hole is 0.75. Well, half of 0.75 is 5 eighths. No, I'm sorry, um, 3 eighths. Because half of 3 fourths is 3 eighths. So we're going to offset half of 3 fourths, which is 3 eighths. So 3 slash 8, enter. And then we're going to Okay, so now that we have the diameter, we can draw a line here, and that will uh, cut off that top part. So we can do the trim on that, and just trim this in here. Okay, and of course we need to extend those down. And there's a number of ways we can do this. We could turn on our perpendicular and just drag it down. Uh, this is going to turn into a center line, so we can just leave it on here and turn it to center because we will use that. These other lines are actually going to be hidden lines, and we will turn those to hidden. Okay, and here this line is going to meet at the base, but we're going to have to do snap to tangent. Now my O-snap toolbars are not on. I'm going to go ahead and get that on. And the reason why I keep the object snap toolbar on 
is so just for tangent because tangent works a little bit different and you have to click it at that time or it will not work the way it should so I'm going to click on snap to tangent the way I did that is line I clicked here I'm going to click on snap to tangent because I want it to snap to tangent here if I did quadrant there it would be too much and this line would be underneath the circle so we don't need that okay and then this line is next what we know about the arc on the bottom is that it comes in tangent to that arc so that arc is one radius we know that it's 0.62 from this quadrant line and that center point is somewhere on that line that's 0.62 away so the way that we're going to do that is just draw a construction line out to here we're going to offset 0.62 down Okay, we're going to create a circle from that endpoint because remember the we did not choose that endpoint at a certain distance, but we know the center of that circle lies on that line somewhere. So we're going to just create it here with the center of it at the endpoint, and that radius was one, right? And we know that this circle is tangent, or it it's not tangent but it runs into it's coincident with the 0.12 away from the edge of that hole so we need to offset this over 0.12 and I think that went to the wrong side it snapped we'll try that again I'm going to just come out here to where I know okay so now we know that this circle contacts this area at that point at this endpoint so we're going to click on this circle and just simply move it from here from this point that's our displacement point to here which is our or this was our base point and this is our displacement point so now we can trim that and this time when I use trim I'm going to select this part as my uh, cutting edge so before when you clicked on trim you just right clicked and everything was a cutting edge well if you don't right click you can select a cutting edge so that's my cutting edge now I'm going to right click and now I can choose this and it trims it all so I don't have to go in here and click in every little area now I'm going to do line snap to tangent and snap to tangent again and it creates the geometry we need there then I can do trim this time I'm just going to right click and I'm done so I can get rid of this line and this line because those were just simply construction lines and I can actually we'll, we'll go ahead we need this line but we don't know the boundaries of it so we're going to go ahead and delete it and we need to trim this out Okay, so that gets us there, and we can just delete that part. We don't need it anymore. So that's our front view. We need to put some um, center marks. Again, I'm going to come up here to my toolbars and get my dimension toolbar. The reason why I'm getting my dimension toolbar is because it's got the center mark command. I'm going to make my center layer current. I'm going to choose the center mark command and choose the outside of the circles and it makes perfect center marks for us I will keep my center layer current and draw a line from here on out and draw another line from here to here and that allows me to keep my center marks perfect and still have that center line going all the way through okay that's the front view the front view is where we're going to base our sections off of. I want you to draw the top view on your own. Now that you have the front view, you can draw the top view and it shouldn't be that hard. And just come up here right above it. What, I, what we need to do, let's go ahead and just save this. File, save as. And we're going to find the place where you save your folders. 
we're going to call this rocker arm and you need to put your name in the file name okay we're going to toggle over to layout one because this is our border right now the viewport is right here if I click right here you notice this whole thing is highlighted well that's my viewport we are in paper space we can see that and we can see these things over here well when you click on your viewport and you have to have your viewport selected or it will not work this little lock comes up well the viewport is locked right now so anytime that we zoom right now if I come up here to zoom it's not zooming the drawing it's just zooming the piece of paper so I'm going to unlock my viewport and double click in here when I double click in here you can see how that is darkened and it's highlighted and my cursor is different when I go over the line you can also see down here that I'm in model space well now anytime I zoom I'm zooming the drawing so you see the difference there you can also see that my scale changes so anytime you zoom your scale is going to change that was one to one when my viewport was locked so what we want to do is do a zoom extents I'm going to click zoom extents and I'm going to click out one time well that centers up my drawing and now I'm going to come back over here and make this scale back one to one and you're going to have your top view so you may want to pan that down and give yourself room for your top view okay now my scale is still one to one because it doesn't change for a pan but I'm going to click on lock and lock that up so it now when you zoom all it does is zoom the paper and not the drawing and you'll notice your scale stays the same alright so I'm going to double click I'm back in paper space because I double clicked out here in the gray area and you can see that everything's back to normal the lock is no longer there because we have our viewport is not selected and we're not in the model space now to get your section views, because your section views are going to be on a separate sheet, this is going to be sheet 1 and then your section views will be sheet 2. I'm going to toggle back over to model space and just to get this out of the way so you can see a little better, I'm going to go to uh, view, display, UCS icon and we'll turn that off because we don't really need it for this drawing. And we're going to create our section view. Well, the first thing that we need is a cutting plane line, so I'm going to make my phantom layer current because that's the layer that's assigned for cutting plane and we're going to draw a line anywhere in here because if we look at our drawing here is a section view we want to see that rib we want to see how that is made because it's not from our front view we can't really tell what that is and even from our top view it, it's kind of hard to see so we're going to create a section view of that and we're going to create it anywhere along here so mine may be a little bit different than yours but it's all going to work out the same in the end so I just picked a point and drew my section line now the section line needs arrowheads we're going to put the arrowheads facing the left and that means this section view will be a right side view so to get that arrowhead I'm just going to choose linear dimension and I'm just going to come out here and make a dimension about that long and I'm going to click on that dimension and explode it. We're cheating. We're taking what we need. We need an arrowhead and we need a line. So we're going to take both of those and we're going to copy it from this endpoint to this endpoint. And we actually need one on the bottom, so we'll, we'll copy that down as well. And now we have a nice, clean section line. And we can just delete all that since we exploded it it's all separate entities so you gotta make sure that you select all of it and now we can actually label that so I'm just gonna choose single line text that's probably the easiest thing we're gonna click for our start point and then it asks us if we want to rotate it we don't want to rotate it so we can just hit enter and this is going to be section A so I'm going to put caps lock on and do a capital A and then I'm going to come down here without hitting enter or anything I'm still in the command I'm going to come down here and click and do another A okay then I'm going to click over here anywhere I click it puts my cursor well that's okay 
it's not creating a text box but now I can hit escape out of it and it doesn't delete my A's I still have my A's okay so that's what your front view now looks like to create the section view we need to know the diameters whoops I'm sorry there we go we need to know this as 0.25 and this is 0.25 okay so we know that these are 0.25 we're going to create circles and create this little uh, plus mark here this cross and we're gonna the way we're gonna do that is create a circle let's do our zero layer back on and we're gonna create a circle with the center here and that diameter is 0.25 the enter 0.25 enter and we're gonna move that down see we don't need it there but we're going to click on it and move it from this quadrant that's our base point to this as our displacement point now what we're creating is this section right at the center or right at the um, top of this rib so our height is exactly at this point where that line intersects this top line so this intersection is the height of our section view same thing down here this intersection is going to be the lower height so what we need to do we could copy this circle I can click here and hit copy and we can copy it from that bottom quadrant down here to that intersection okay so we have that now we need to look at this this is 1.25 in depth remember this is a right side view so our depth is going to be the actual depth of the object and it's stated here so we need 1.25 so we need to offset from this line half of that and half of 1 is 0.5 and half of 0.25 would be um, uh, 0.125 so if you put that together that's point um, no it's 5 8 so 0.56 or yeah okay so we're going to do offset and we can just type in 5 8 5 slash 8 0.625 is 5 8 so I got that mixed up okay we're going to click here go to the right go to the left and we're going to do the same thing now this intersection is not going to pick up because I've got a gap here and a gap here so that's not going to pick up as an intersection so I'm going to change this line and this line to a zero layer so it will pick up that intersection and I'm going to well I can just copy my circle I could make one or I could copy it so I'm going to click here and copy that circle and the reason why I can copy that circle before we go further is because that's also 0.25 if it was different I couldn't copy it right so let me get you back into it. I'm going to click on that and click on copy. I want to choose the left quadrant there as my base point and I want to choose uh, and it's not giving me the intersection. Wait a minute, there it is. Okay. And that was my displacement point. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I can click on that circle, go to copy. This is my base point and this is my displacement point okay now before I get any further because I don't want to mess up my front view I'm just going to select those four circles right here just those four circles and I'm going to move that down so uh, this is my base point and I'm going to move it down just far enough to give me some room and that's my displacement point well now I can connect these if I connect them all from the quadrant then I can trim that out oh I need to trim that too so let's get back in the trim I can trim these circles now and it's starting to look like what we need but we also have the fillets here so all the fillets and rounds are 0.12 so we're going to go to fillet and we're going to hit R, enter, 0.12, enter, and 
choose to fill it all of those corners and I'm right clicking to get back in the command I could hit the space bar and it put me back in that command okay and then I'm gonna hatch that so I'm gonna click on hatch and uh, the hatch pattern that we use as a standard in sectioning is already on there it's ANSI 31 and we don't have to change any of this we just have to choose a pick internal point and click inside of this object and right click choose enter and it takes us back and we'll hit OK and now we have a nice section view now we need to label our section so we're going to come up here to single line text again and we're going to click here and we're going to type in well first it says specify rotation angle so we're just going to hit enter there and then we're going to type in uh, section and remember we're in all caps AA and then we'll click out of it and hit escape okay so that's our section AA and we could turn that into a phantom layer just to match up here this is going to be on a separate sheet we come back we don't need these construction line anymore so we'll go and delete those we're going to do the same thing here and this is going to be section B so instead of creating a whole new cutting plane I'm just going to copy that over and it's going to snap wherever my snap point is there so you may want to toggle snap off so I'm going to hit F3 and turn that snap off and just choose an area to copy it to this is going to be section BB so I'm going to double click and I'm just going to type B here I'm going to double click down here and type B here too okay and we're going to do the same exact thing the difference here though is this is still 0.25 but this is 0.38 so we're going to have to uh, create two different circles we'll start doing the same thing I'm going to toggle my snap back on and F3 toggles your snap on and off okay so that's a diameter of 0.25 I'm going to move that down from that quadrant to here okay and I'm going to copy that from that bottom quadrant to this one and that distance was 2 remember so we're going to have to offset 1 on either side offset 1 okay and then that diameter is uh, 0.38 and what we can actually do we can snap it to that intersection and then we can move it from here to here and we can copy that from that quadrant to this intersection alright and it did pick up our intersection sometimes it don't if you have a gap but it did on that one alright we can go ahead and delete these lines we don't need those and we'll copy those down and try to line it up with the other okay and this time we'll do the same thing and we can trim that out trim our circles and put our hatch mark choose inside hit OK and we have another section view we can copy this over because once you create something it's just better to copy it and that saves you some time and the only thing that we change here is change that to BB and that section view is done now this section view we're going to treat it as a detail so we need to delete those out if we I copied them instead of moved them 
Alright, so this section U, we're going to treat it as a detail, and it's going to look exactly like what we see here, where it's opened up. And it's going to be a broken out section. These others were revolved sections, but we moved them so they became removed sections. We don't have a cutting plane line, <coughs> but what we do have is a circle. A detail, we can make our phantom layer current. We're going to draw a circle, and we want to see right in here. So our circle is going to be something like that. Okay? And then we're going to uh, do a leader line, and we can use. I don't want to use a jog. We want to multi-leader. We'll just use multi-leader. There's different kinds of leaders in 2010 version. Before it was called a quick leader. And we can do at any point, probably not the quadrant. We'd prefer to do it over here. So I'm going to toggle the F3 and I'm just going to the best of my ability get it on there so I'm going to click on that circle and I'm going to take ortho off to toggle ortho off that's F8 so I'm going to hit F8 to toggle ortho off and then I'm going to create this leader line it automatically does a little tail and we're going to call this detail D-E-T-A-I-L A-A so we have section AA, section BB, and then detail A. So we're going to click out of it. All right, and it gives us what we need. Now we're going to take this area and we're going to copy it. So in order to do that, we really need to kind of select this whole spot. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. We don't really need the circles, but we can just delete them copy that down here and for right now since I need some room I'm going to put it here we're going to move it to make it in line when we're done all I'm going to do is trim away everything that's on the outside of this circle because the detail only covers what's inside the detail circle and then we can just delete all of this other. Okay, now let's toggle back here and we've got this area that we need to single out. So we're going to do just a jagged line here and a jagged line here and open that up. It's not going to look 3D like it does in the picture, but you'll still be able to see it. So we've got ortho off already. We're just going to do a let's see how far back it goes we're about in here right we got enough of that circle so we'll, we'll start it here and all we're doing is just a jagged line nothing too crazy we don't want sharks teeth sticking up here but it needs to be something that's it's not a uniform line and we're going to trim out where we started it and stopped it okay and then on the inside we're going to trim some too but let's let's make the other line we're going to start it maybe right here okay and then we'll trim that and that looks kind of funny maybe we can you want it to where it's not uniform but not too crazy <coughs> and then this line is going to become a zero layer because we're seeing the inside of it and this part will be trimmed because we're also seeing the inside of it uh, this will not be there we'll have to delete that this will be trimmed out okay and then this part will be section so we'll go to hatch pick point and we'll click here and here and hit okay and really those don't need to be phantom 
we need to change all that back to our zero layer so I'm just going to select all those lines and change that back to zero and that will be the inside view at that point okay and that's going to be our detail AA since we have that we don't need this anymore and we don't need this so we're going to delete that we're going to move this up to make sure that it's pretty much in line with the others I'm going to copy this over and I'm turning ortho back on so I can keep those uniformly straight and I'm going to double click on this and just type in detail AA and that completes that part now what we have to do is come over to our layout remember we said that this was sheet one and we can fill that in as sheet one and you may want to put one of two so you know how many sheets are in the whole set you'll have your front view and your top view and you'll have dimensions on that we're going to copy layout one if we go to layout two there's no there's nothing on there so we don't really need layout two we need a copy of layout one so I'm going to click on the tab here I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit move or copy and then I'm going to make sure this layout one's highlighted create a copy hit OK now we have that layout one with a parentheses two I need to right click on that and say rename this is going to be sections and then I can name layout one maybe um, rocker arm or main drawing so I can click uh, or right click here hit rename and just put uh, rocker arm and that way when you open up a drawing you may have 15 sheets in one set of drawing and you can have them all labeled in your layout so let's click on sections it's the exact same thing but we don't want that we want to click on our viewport again we're going to unlock it and let's just do a zoom extents oh, I'm sorry we got to double click in here to make sure we're in model space we have an unlocked viewport but we had to be in model space now let's do zoom extents now it's showing our sections we want to do a zoom out and we want to do a zoom window zoom window is the very first one in your zoom toolbar and we're just going to do a zoom window around those section views that's all we want to show now we want those section views right now it's a uh, scale here well, let, let's see what it looks like as a uh, one to two scale or no that's a half scale we'll need a two to one scale I'm sorry and that's a little bit big we could put those in there but that's kind of big let's just do a one to one scale on those sections as well gives us plenty of room we can even put some dimensions on these sections because that would be a little bit easier and we got a one to one scale everything's labeled we'll go ahead and lock that viewport so it doesn't change on us if I'll go back over to paper space now the only thing you have left is to fill in your title block on your rocker arm and your sections so do the top view and fill in the title blocks on the other and you will be finished